you have, if you've been with me a while, you know I'm always talking about knowing what the what your rotor temperature is so that you can match up uh, match up the brake pad compound. It, it's really important that your brake compound is 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 matched up to your rotor temperature. Uh, that's how they're going to work the best. If if you got rotor temperatures higher than than the compound was designed for. Uh, you got to, the wear factor is going to be really high. You're going to wear them out really fast. If you've got a compound that is higher than what your rotor uh, temperature is, then what's going to happen is is the brakes are, aren't going to work that well. They'll probably squeal, uh, and, and they just won't have have a good grip. We have had had that uh, firsthand experience. We had a gentleman I was talking to from New York or Connecticut, I believe, and he had a GT500. That he was he was putting on track and we were helping him with it and I, I said well we've got these really great brake pads these uh, uh, G-Lock brake pads which I can get pre bedded for you so you don't have to bed them and he's I I tried them and they they don't work at all I said well what compound did you have and he he the compound he told me was the absolute top end race pad okay I mean it works to 2100 degrees it does it it's the lowest temperature is like 600. So you really need to have for a, a brake uh, pad like that, you really need it to be the 14, 1600 uh, temperature range. And he, he said the same thing. He said they make noise, didn't stop very well. Well, that's, that's the, the, the person that sold them to him ha had no idea, had no, no concept of brake pads. And he just thought, well, it's a GT500. I'll give him the, you know, the, 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 the uh, most, the biggest, best uh, pad, race pad. And it, it doesn't work. He needed to be three compounds down from that race pad. So anyway, that, that's why you have to match. But the only way to, to really know, but if you call me, I can I can I can talk to you about that. My my car typically ran with brake ducts. Now, remember, brake ducts are important if you're going on track. My my car typically ran about 1,200 degrees on the rotor temperature. Uh, so that, that's why I keep talking about rotor temperature. And without without brake ducts, I would have been 1600 degrees easy. So brake ducts are really important. They help they help uh, keep temperature under control, which means the, the brakes work better, the brake pads last longer, and your rotors last longer. So it's all good things. What we use is rotor temperature paint. Now let me pull my handy dandy display up here. Now this is one of, one of our uh, bare brake packages, and what I use, what we use is a uh, rotor temperature paint. And the nice thing about it is just one color. You can see you point, you, you paint it on and you don't want, you don't want to put the, your crayons on the veins. You want to put them on the rotor, rotor itself, not the veins, because the veins are going to be a lower temperature than, than, the, than the, the outside. And that's where you want to know what's, what's the temperature right here. What's that temperature between the rotor and the brake pad? And the nice thing about it is it goes on, that's the color it goes on as, but as it goes through different heat cycles, you can see that it changes colors, okay? And, you know, the different colors are, I actually had it upside down. Okay. Now, it's, uh, the first one is, uh, oop, I had, well, I, I it, it, the high is at the bottom. The uh, the low is goes up to 687 Fahrenheit. Uh, the second, the red brown, goes to 804. The uh, what color is that? The brown goes to uh, 1074. The yellow green goes to 1326, and that's typically where where my rotors are. And then the green goes up to 1470. And then the, the beige is uh, above uh, 1471. So if, you're, if your crayons uh, are good between, I'm going to say, uh, 900 and, and 1400 degrees, you can use them, but they have to be on the outside. And you know, my, my concern is if they melt, well, well they, they get on, on, you know, on the road. I mean, I don't know that much about them. I'm just you know, making guesses. So you know, the, the, better, the better it would be to use you know, brake rotor temperature paint it's uh yeah i mean it, it it's got let's see one two three four five six different uh temperature ranges and i'm not sure what temperature ranges your crayons are at so why we're thinking about why we're thinking about rotor uh, brakes and rotors 
uh, just a couple more tips. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times we get cars and the rotors are installed backwards. Uh, we had one customer with a boss that uh, uh, somebody was working on his, his car that, you know, honestly just wasn't very good. And he kept burning up brakes. And even though he had brake ducts, he kept burning up brakes. So he, he brought it in to get that and a whole bunch of other things fixed. And sure enough, the, uh, the rotors were on backwards. Okay. And uh, because of that, uh, they don't cool. Now, a rotor cools from the inside out, and the vanes are always pointing backwards. And he's pointing outwards. And when you have a slotted rotor, remember, never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever use drilled rotors. Uh, I unconditionally, 120% guarantee that they will crack at the holes. Absolutely guaranteed. No question about it. That's why we only use slotted rotors. Slotted rotors do two things. One, they help clear brake dust. And secondly, they help relieve the gas pressure that builds up between the rotor and the brake pad at the trailing edge of the brake pads. Uh, when brakes get really hot, they'll build up. They'll build, if there's no place for the gas to go, they'll build up at the back of the pad, and the pads will wear unevenly. Back when we were doing the Celine cars, we had to run stock rotors, which were smooth, no, no, uh, no uh, grooves. And, you know, we do you know, run 24-hour races. We do maybe two brake changes. And every time we pull the brakes off, the front of the brake pad was just, you know, starting to touch the metal and the back half, it was still half a pad in the back. That's because the gas pressure built up in the back. Well, you got these handy slots and that relieves that pressure. The other thing that is important to know is these slots should always take place forward. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people think, you know, it's racy, you know, they station point backwards, but no, they need to paint uh, uh, face forward. So uh, the thing is that, and you can tell if you go and you can feel the road, see that the, the vein is going this way. Okay. So if, if you're going forward, if these slots are going forward, it's going to help vent because you always want to get air to the uh, air to the eye of the rotor, which is right here. Uh, because they, they cool from the inside out. You know, our, our brake ducts, I don't have one here, but uh, my brake ducts are pretty unique. It's a three inch squash down so that 100% of the air goes into the eye of the rotor. So they cool better than, uh, than like a four inch brake duct, even though you think a four inch brake duct would be better. It, uh, it doesn't cool as well as my three inch because all the air goes into the eye of the rotor with a four inch brake duct. Half the air goes into the eye, half the air hits the face of the rotor. So you end up with two different temperatures outside and inside. So that kind of that should that answers uh, uh, the other question. Bill's question that goes into that is kind of use an infrared parameter uh, to measure brake rotor temperature or a brake probe that is a tire parameter. Uh, yes, you can use them, but it's only going to tell you the temperature that the brakes that the rotors are at, and they've more than likely they have cooled down quite a bit. The temperature you want to know is what is the peak temperature under braking. You know, what's the hottest these the rotors get to? And if you, if you watch like, you know, Daytona or Le Mans at night, uh, you can see the brake rotors glowing bright red. Well, they're going from, you know, one temperature way up to bright red and then they cool back down. Well, if you use, if you use it like an infrared or, or, or a parameter, uh, you're not going to find out what peak temperature is. I mean, this is about, you know, the best way to find out what your peak temperature is, is with uh, rotor paint. 